rapture has to happen before the seven year tribulation because of the effect upon us. Let me explain. Knowing that the rapture can happen at any moment, should and even will have a profound effect on how we live our lives in this world. This is what's known as the doctrine of imminence. I love that word imminent, because it's kind of one of those words that sounds like what it is. Any minute. Imminent. I know that's not the literal definition, just, you know, indulge me, but it's this, this, uh, the doctrine of imminence is this sound doctrine that nothing has to happen before the rapture happens. That the rapture can happen at any time. It is imminent. It can happen at any minute. Welcome to the program. Say, because folks are always writing and wanting to debate the timing of the rapture of the church, I thought I would spend a good portion of this hour in that discussion. And I'm going to have that with apologist Dr. Ron Rhodes. And we carry a number of Ron's books, and I'll say more about that later. And rapture timing is, quite frankly, an in-house discussion. And those who hold differing views should certainly not be denigrated. However, I think pointing out some of the obvious flaws in the pre-wrath rapture, mid-trib, post-trib rapture, I think it's worth some time. The soon rapture of the church, it's called our blessed hope in the Bible. And I believe there would be no hope in a rapture that was not pre-tribulation. We would have hell on earth to look forward to, to be honest. And the position of my guest and myself is that God does not beat up his bride. Now, let me clarify that he does allow man and Satan to beat up Christians, to persecute them, to marginalize them. But God's wrath is reserved only for the unbelieving world, and it's on overdrive during the seven-year tribulation. Now, before we get into the rapture timing, I'm going to ask my guest about a topic. Let's just call it Afghanistan in Bible Prophecy. Has the ordeal of late summer and early fall here, is it just an accident in its timing? Or could it be a part of a greater prophecy scenario? And I believe the latter. Dr. Ron Rhodes heads Reasoning from the Scriptures Ministries. You can learn more about his outreach books and more at ronrhodes.org. He's written over 60 books, and he's spoken at my Understanding the Times conference. He's one of my most frequent radio guests, part-time staff of Dallas Theological Seminary. Dr. Ron Rhodes, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Jan. It's always great to spend some time with you. Ron, we've had a momentous summer. For that matter, we've had a momentous year and a half, going to soon be two years with pandemic and all, but let's just journey for a moment to Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a part of Magog. Magog is a part of the Gog-Magog War of Ezekiel 3839. As a matter of fact, the stands are a part of Magog, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, etc., Help my audience better understand the Magog character of the Gog-Magog War. The broader context, of course, is that Meshach and Tubal, Gomer, are going to be participating. That's Turkey. Persia will be involved in the war. That's Iran. Ethiopia will be involved. That's modern Sudan. And Put will also be one of the allies that attacks Israel. And that's Libya. Now, Magog is a central player in all of this. And Magog refers to the mountainous region near the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Jan, I want you to try to picture it this way in your mind's eye. The Black Sea and the Caspian Sea are essentially parallel to each other. The Black Sea is to the west, the Caspian Sea is to the east. And bordering on that eastern side of the Caspian Sea are Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan. And just a bit further east, we come to Uzbekistan. And continuing east, we come to Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. And if you drop just a little bit south, we come to Afghanistan. All of these Stan nations occupy the territory that was once inhabited by the ancient Magogites, or Magog. Way back when Ezekiel wrote his prophecy some 2,600 years ago, nobody knew what these different nations would have against Israel. A lot of the nations that are involved in the Ezekiel invasion are not right next to each other. 
So what might they have in common? Well, of course, Islam would eventually develop in the 7th and 8th century A.D. That is what brings unity to these various nations. All the Stan nations that are part of Magog are Islamic, and now they have plenty of motive to attack Israel. They've talked about how they want to wipe Israel off the map and push Israel into the sea. They want the land back. They're of the opinion that once the land comes under Islamic control, it can never pass out of Islamic control. When Israel became a nation again, that was illegitimate. Right. That land belongs to Allah. Well, the Americans have left $85 billion in weaponry behind, which is ominous. Why on earth do you leave almost $100 billion in sophisticated weaponry, which maybe the Afghan fighters won't know how to operate, but the Russians will happily train them. Could that then be a part of the weaponry talked about in Ezekiel 38:39? Because the weaponry is pictured there in the passage of Gog and Magog, and it says that the Jews are going to be burning the weapons in this war because they're going to turn around and defeat these invaders rather quickly, but they're going to burn the weapons for seven years. That's right. When this massive storm of an invasion takes place against Israel, Israel won't stand a chance. There's no way that Israel alone could stand against that large Mm -hmm. of an invading force. The prophet Ezekiel tells us that God himself is going to take out these invaders. You're going to see all these weapons left on the landscape, and the Jewish people will gather these weapons to burn. Now, here is the backdrop. Burnable materials will be in high demand during the tribulation period. All of the grass has already been burned on the earth, a third of the trees, a third of the bushes. So a lot of the burnable materials that people normally burn has already been taken out due to the catastrophes that have fallen upon the world. People are going to be looking for burnable materials. And, of course, we're talking about the wooden components that are on modern weapons. We're not talking about burning metal. Most of the weapons do have some wooden components to them. And there's also burnable fuel and gunpowder that can be used to heat yourself, for example, during winter. All of those weapons will be gathered and burned for seven years by the Jews who are left behind. Jan, that leads me to say this. Some people wonder if the United States is in Bible prophecy. There's now at least one likely way the United States is in Bible prophecy, and that is that U.S. weapons will likely Mm. be among the weapons burned for seven years during the future tribulation period. And you can read all about it in Ezekiel 39, verses 9 and 10.